The following scenario is a common one in immune reactions. An immune reaction can start when the hematopoietic stem cells of the bone marrow are stimulated by cytokine local hormones to differentiate into the common myeloid progenitors. These then differentiate further into monocytes, and monocytes circulate throughout the blood. Upon inflammatory stimuli or signals from an infected area, monocytes can leave the blood where they then differentiate into either macrophages or dendritic cells. These cells share some features and it is the cytokine signals given to the monocytes and the transcription factors which they subsequently express to change their DNA expression patterns which will determine whether the monocytes differentiate into dendritic cells or macrophages. Both macrophages and dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells that after performing phagocytosis of microbes can present the microbes to T cells and stimulate them for further immune reactions. This situation is a bit more complex, however. There are different types of monocytes which express different types of cell membrane receptors and differ in their abilities to differentiate into dendritic cells or into dendritic cells and macrophages. There are also different classes of macrophages. While some differentiate from monocytes, others are produced before the hematopoietic stem cell precursors exist in embryos and are produced directly from the yolk sac of the embryo or from the fetal liver. These travel to diverse tissues and take on different characteristics, and so the macrophages of the liver, known as Kupfer cells, or of the spleen, may be different from the microglia of the brain. Some of these cells are capable of dividing, and so therefore they can regenerate and provide new macrophages, while some lineages of macrophages cannot regenerate and thus must be supplied by monocytes from the blood. Different types of macrophages express different receptors. While different classes of monocytes can differentiate into dendritic cells, most dendritic cells originate from the bone marrow precursor cells directly without going through a monocyte precursor stage. Some are produced by the common myeloid progenitor cells, while some are produced by the common lymphoid progenitor cells. So different bone marrow precursor cells can produce dendritic cells. Some dendritic cells travel as an immature cell which goes to a lymphoid organ and differentiates there, such as the thymus, the spleen, or a lymph node while other dendritic cells go to a different tissue and, upon being stimulated by infectious agents, travel through lymphatic vessels to lymph nodes where they differentiate into dendritic cells. So thus, dendritic cells can have a variety of different origins and different dendritic cells express a variety of different receptors. Monocytes, dendritic cells, and macrophages are not only important parts of the innate immune system, they are incredibly important for the activation of the adaptive immune system. Unfortunately, these types of cells include many subsets of cells, and the different types of monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells can vary in what receptors they express and what compounds they interact with, what local hormones they secrete, which might interact with cells of the adaptive immune system, and even their origin. And so one can find different subsets of the same class of cell with different origins expressing different cell receptors coexisting in the same tissue at the same time.
current research is investigating to what degree these separate populations of cells contribute to unique aspects of immune responses.